Hey Creative Crowd, how are you doing? I'm having a great day because one of my viewers suggested a video. A guy on YouTube says he figured out how to fix the displacement effect in Affinity Photo. And in this video, I will show you what this is about and even how to improve on his findings. You can see here, we have a blank wall. There's a text on the wall. The displacement effect is just a part of making it look that realistic. So watch the full video to get all the other tricks too. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria, and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you very much for that and let's get started. So let's check out the video from the guy. His channel is called Digitally Fearless. He's a really interesting YouTuber doing tutorials on Affinity Photo. Check out his channel and especially this video. And um, by the way, I asked his permission, he says, would be great. So. I have the permission to show the video, talk about it. Um, what he's doing basically is he says he's turning the picture black and white and then he's blurring it a bit and uh, then he's basically exporting this and using that picture as the map for the displacement. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will get to that in a second right now actually. So let's go over here. We have a similar picture and um, Let's delete the displacement, uh, the, the blur effect real quick. So I will click on the picture layer and like he did, I will apply a Gaussian blur to the picture. So click on preserve alpha and then blur it to a degree where you can still see the picture, um, but it's kind of blurry and you want to like have the greater details, but lose the smaller details. So. Um, what I figured out, I played around with this for about two hours to figure out what works, why does it work, how can you maybe do it better, stuff like that. I figured out you don't really have to turn it black and white or export it. You can actually just now go select your text layer, which is automatically transferred to pixel when you start to use the, X, uh, the effect. You go to filters, distort, and then to um, displace. And you can click on load map from layer beneath because this is now the blurred picture. Uh, now what you're going to see is the effect looks interesting, but we still have a problem here. Let's zoom in a little bit more. We have a problem here that the outlines don't look very good. And I, it took me a really long time to actually find a solution to the problem. And there, it's kind of obvious when you found it. You can see here you have this kind of toothy outlines which are really, really ugly. You can't use the effect in that way. Um, so I found a solution around that. And the reason why you have these kind of strange outlines is because the picture just doesn't have enough brightness levels because the displacement effect works on the brightness levels. So how can we fix that? And I found when you go to document color format and turn it from 8-bit to either 16-bit or even 32-bit, if your computer is strong enough, let's turn it to 32-bit here, you will see when you now use the same effect. So filter, distort, displace, load from layer beneath. And when you now Um, okay, takes a lot longer than I expected and it broke. No, there it is. Okay, cool. So you can see now that we have really smooth outlines. So this is the reason. The reason is there is not enough levels of brightness in an 8-bit file. And um, so I think an 8-bit file is like 512 levels. And um, in the 32-bit file, there's thousands and thousands of levels, so more than enough uh, for this effect. Okay, let's go over to our wall. Um, and I will delete this part here, and I will delete the Gaussian blur. And I already changed the document. You can see here color format, it's already changed to 32-bit. Um, so I will write text now as before. So let's write this, hello. Whoop, my cat is on the table, one second. There's my cat, hey. <laughs> okay, so let's go on. Um, put the text on here, twist it a little bit so it fits into the picture. 
uh, maybe make it a little bit smaller there we go okay so again what we're going to do is click on the picture layer use um, live filter Gaussian blur and then click on preserve alpha and blur it a little bit mm, maybe this is okay good okay so now again we go to filters distort displays and you can see it automatically changes it into a pixel layer we get a little warning load from layer beneath i hope this goes a little bit faster this time it does very nice and you only want to tweak it a little bit um actually you can see here we still have too much detail so cancel that go into gaussian blur and this is what i found uh, more uh, like it's kind of easier to do when you don't export it because you can just go back into the uh, live filter change it around then remember to click on the text layer again go to filter distort displays load from layer beneath it come on there we go and okay that looks a lot better and you can see here it bends in different directions the directions are based on the brightness and darkness in the picture so you have to figure out which direction works for uh, what you want to achieve here and a little bit of uh, like a small setting already is enough let's see i think i think this is the right direction yeah okay let's leave it like this good so let's turn off the gaussian blur and you can see it looks like the text is following the structure of the stone in the background the problem is it doesn't really look any kind of real realistic right now so we have to do some additional tweaks so we're going to do two things that are really important first of all you click on the text layer go to the little wrench here and then you use the underlying composition ranges pull the left side completely down and then uh, unhook the linear button down here and create the first knob or kind of control point and push this up here until a level where you feel like satisfied with what is what it is doing and then create a second point so because you can see here this is hitting the upper area and we would lose all these values we don't want to have that we want to have a smooth transition so you click again and pull this down until the line is going smoothly over to the other side you can see now this looks pretty realistic another thing that we want to do and this is just a small tweak but it makes it so much more realistic is take the background layer and duplicate it um can delete this effect here put it on top and then we go to filters blur average and this will give us the average of all the colors in the picture and the next thing we're going to do is simply um no well actually we have to do two steps uh we go to our text layer we hold control and click and this will create a selection then we click again on the color layer that we just created with this kind of color mush and click on make mask layer and this will create a mask so now this effect is limited just to the text and now the only thing we have to do is reduce the opacity to a very low value uh, let's go with let's say 10 percent is good and you can see here it is a very slight change in color but it is the ambient light that actually makes you feel like the color is actually on the wall because now it has the right color the right kind of gradient of white or the how can I say right tone of white that it has to have in this kind of situation so this um, last step is very crucial to actually make it look realistic okay that was the tutorial on how to work with the fixed uh, displacement effect or kind of a workaround again check out the channel digitally fearless really cool channel really interesting tutorials and thank you very much uh, for him for finding out how to fix the displacement effect um, yeah thank you very much see you in the next video bye